Good morning, everybody. My name is Ira Bowman. I'm the host of Project Podcast, and today I'm excited. I have all the way from the East Coast, Jeff Altman, a.k.a. the Big Game Hunter. Yeah! Yes. He's a career and leadership coach. Jeff, welcome to the show. It is so good to have you on, my friend. Thank you, Ira. Great to be on. Hope to be able to help some folks tonight. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're going to have a good time. I thought I'd turn this thing to silent, but I didn't. I turned it to on, so let me just fix that there. <laughs> Anyways, I've got three questions for you. We've got just under 10 minutes. Are you ready to get started? You betcha I am. <laughs> All right, question number one. Can you tell my audience about your radio show, the show called No BS Job Search Advice Radio? I think I could do that. I started doing a podcast in 2010, November 2010, uh, about job search. I was still working in recruiting at that time and thought I would do a morning show on Mondays as a way of helping people kick off the, the job search week. So I would do a 15-minute rant that concluded with a list of jobs I was recruiting for. And, you know, blog talk radio, you get on the show – you know, you, you say a bunch of stuff, and I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning, but with time, you kind of learn. And the show is now number one in Apple Podcasts, more than 1,500 episodes. I've spun off a YouTube channel called Job Search TV, uh, at JobSearchTV.com, by the way. <laughs> and, and that one has more than 6,000 videos about job search, about hiring, about managing people, being effective in the workplace. You know, what I do as a career coach and leadership coach is help people be more effective in more, at work in one way or another. So between the two, it's a great resource for people to really push their excellence and to develop their skills and abilities much more with you know do it at, at your leisure because all the shows are concise you know whether it's a video or a podcast the podcasts are slightly longer five six minutes the videos three occasionally i do a full interview but overall they tend to be you know concise shows like this one is that's awesome let me ask you a question because you have so many uh, episodes which is great is there a, a way, like, let's say they, they have a specific desire, like I want to do interview prep or I want to ATS or something like that. Can they search by, you know, content that way? I'm sure you can on, on the podcast because Apple Podcasts lets you search that way. What's easier is the YouTube channel in that regard because I have playlists there. So if you're looking for answers to tough interview questions, you can look for that. Uh, as a playlist. If you're looking for interview prep, you can look for that as a playlist. Okay. You know, I have it segmented in that way to make it easy for folks. That's awesome. And just so people know, if you're looking for the jobsearchtv.com, which I think is definitely a resource you should take advantage of, I'm going to link this podcast directly to that. So you click on the description of this podcast and it'll take you straight to the jobsearchtv.com. Super. <laughs> That's so awesome. We got to I'm ready for the next question. <laughs> I was going to say, question number two might be a little tougher. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Here we go. You and I were talking the other day uh, about social media and the culture of the day about, you know, being polite. Nobody wants to be offended and all these things, right? But sometimes being polite really, you know, or nice, it really isn't. So can you explain a little bit more about that and how it affects um, the job seeker? Yeah. And, and this is a tough subject for people to hear. But... Job hunting is not a natural skill. The skills needed to find a job are different than those needed to do the job. And I don't help you be better at what you do. Uh, I help you be better at your job search performance. And the problem that most people have is they're amateurs in job hunting and they don't really know it. And they don't ask for advice or help to move the needle forward so they develop expertise from reliable sources. And the issue comes down to when you ask people for advice, well, they're trying to be nice. They don't want to hurt your feelings. And they're not giving you an honest or truthful answer. And the result is you wind up learning through trial and error what your mistakes are. And whether I'm not a handy guy. So if I do things around the house, I'm a fix it duck, as, as my son used to call me. You know, it's one of these characters in children's books um, that just is incapable of doing anything well. 
<laughs> if you see me coming with tools, you better run. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So the result winds up being, for most people, they're going to politely tell, oh, that sounded really good. And you weren't. That's an amateur reviewing an amateur. And the result is you get hurt. You need to get, you know, there, there's a, an old roomy poem uh, that basically suggests that people should run away from those who give them placebos. Yeah. That's going to be my interpretation. And the idea very simply is you're better off getting tougher messages and tougher lessons from people that are the, the right lessons because you learn from those as opposed to, oh, that was very good. I really like that one. What can I do better? Oh, that was perfect. Trust me, your answer was not perfect. <laughs> so the idea very simply is being nice isn't. Yeah. You need to get real information, real sources from experts rather than you know the placebo that so many people give. Well, that answer is perfect because it leads directly to my third and final and I think probably the most important question that I'm going to ask you today which is you are a career coach and many still are coming to grips with the fact that they need a coach. Like they, they think, well, no, I've always been able to find a job. I've never paid anybody to help me. And I've always been good at it. In fact, sometimes, sometimes people go like, why would I do that? I've never been on the job market for more than a couple of days. I'm like, okay, well, things have changed. I used to fix my car too. And I don't anymore. Like we were just talking about, you know, I, I got to take it to the car shop because I can't fix it anymore. I used to be able to get a Chilton book and do it myself but i don't have the tools and i don't have a thing to read the computer and all that stuff so my question to you is straightforward um why do people need a coach and how can you help them let me tell you why you need a coach whether it's me or someone else and i start off with the premise of you don't know what you're doing you know the skills needed to find a job are different and even if in the past you were able to get a job in one, two days, one, two weeks, whatever it was. You're more senior now, and the competition's more fierce. You're up against other talented people and trying to stand out. Great athletes all have coaches. Steph Curry, LeBron James, they all have someone who coaches them, even though these are the most, amongst the most talented people in basketball in the world. Great entertainers all have coaches, like Barbara Streisand you know, ha has a singing coach. You know, Lionel Richie. You know, everyone has someone who's watching them and seeing how they perform and guiding them because you can't see yourself. You can't see how you turn it up or turn it off at the wrong times. Someone outside of you can see these sorts of things and can guide you to great performances. Now, if you want to learn by trial and error and hit your head against the brick wall a few times, eventually thinking that you'll break through, you probably will, but it's going to hurt a lot more. In fact, if you have someone who can guide you in your search, not as a recruiter, but as a coach, because recruiters don't work for you, they work for the employer. And along the way, coincidentally, they help you as long as it's for their client. But a coach works for you and is your ally in the process, not to get the big payday at the end from the employer, but to help you be effective in your search. That serves you. And great coaches can also help you once you're on board. So recognize that a coach works for you to help you. And that's what I'm here to do. Ah, awesome. And I agree. And even to, to clarify, LeBron James, Stephon Curry, these guys don't have just one coach. They're, they're basketball coach. They have private coaches that they employ that work just on like, you know, shooting or running. And I'm sure Bob, Barbara Streisand not only has her singing coach, she probably has a dietitian coach and, and other things. She might have, you know, meditation. Who knows, right? But, you know, we think that we're good because we have an idea of how to do it. These are people that are at the top of their profession and they're just trying to get 1% better or even a half a percent better at something and they're paying a lot of money to do it. And the thing I love to remind people of, we've all heard of the 10,000 hour rule. You know, it takes 10,000 hours of concerted effort under the tutelage of a master to become expert at something. And Malcolm Gladwell popularized it in his book, Outliers. 
and you have how much experience job hunting? <laughs> You've hired people. It's different when you're on the other side of the desk. So you've got next to no time experience versus someone like me who's got 90,000 hours helping people find work. So it's a different perspective uh, that will guide you and help you. There's no doubt about it. Jeff, it has been an honor to have you on. I look forward to hopefully talking to you again in the future really soon. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on with you. All right, have a great day. Thank you so much.